Hello and welcome to Kids Church for the week of Monday, January 4th, 2021. My name is Pastor Marissa Becklin and I'm the pastor of Faith United Lutheran Church in Denver, Pennsylvania. And whether you're from our congregation, from our community, or from somewhere else in the world, I'm so glad you're with us today as we learn about God's love for us. Kids Church usually has a story, something that we can learn about together or discuss, and then some time for prayer. And during this month of January, we're going to spend some time, now that Jesus has been born, now that Christmas has happened and baby Jesus is here, we're going to spend some time learning about early stories from when Jesus was little. So the first story I want to read to you this month comes from the beginning of Jesus's life. And if you watched church yesterday, you'll have heard this story already, but we're going to tell some new parts to it and learn some new things. But today we're going to talk about the wise men. If you are like me and have a nativity set, I invite you to look at it. Mine's pretty far away, but just so you know, I have back here is Mary. And way back here is Joseph. And right here is little baby Jesus. And we have a cow, a donkey, a sheep, and there's an angel back here too. But there are three people who are missing. Maybe your nativity has a shepherd at it or different animals too. But if you have a nativity scene, I want you to look really closely today. And I want you to look for three people that maybe they have something fancy on their head, like a crown or a special hat, and they should be holding something in their hands, like a present. So I want you to look for three people. Mine look like this. See how they're holding gifts? These are the three wise men. And maybe you have wise men in your nativity scene. At our house, we don't actually add our wise men to our nativity scene yet until this week because January 6th, Wednesday, is a special day called Epiphany. And that's the day that the wise men came to Jesus' manger. So now this week we can add the wise men to the nativity. And we're going to learn the story of the wise men today and learn about what gifts they brought Jesus. So this story is called Wise Men, and it's in the Spark Children's Bible, Story Bible. On a cool, clear evening, three wise men looked into the night sky and saw a bright star. The wise men had been waiting for someone important to come into the world. They were waiting for a king. They knew that the star was a sign from God. The star is a sign that the king has been born, the shortest one said. We should follow the star and find him, the tallest one said. I'll pack our bags, the middle one said. They left their homes and traveled far to meet this new baby king. They wanted to worship him and give him gifts. So we see in this picture, you can see the three different wise men. And they're looking up at that star in the sky. So maybe at Christmas time, you see lots of star decorations. That's why. Because the wise men saw a star, and it's how they knew that God was here. Along the way, the wise men stopped and visited King Herod, the ruler of that land. We are following the star to find the baby king, they told King Herod. Do you know where he is? When King Herod heard that the baby king had been born, he was afraid. He thought the baby would grow up and take over. Then Herod wouldn't be the king anymore. So King Herod spoke to the wise men. He pretended to be nice. He told the wise men, I'd like to meet the new baby king. Why don't you go find him and come back here and tell me where he is? Then I can go worship him too. So down here we have the three wise men riding camels. Maybe your wise men and your nativity have a camel with them. That's what we think they traveled on. And then way up here we see King Herod and he looks kind of mad. He does not excite, he's not excited about Jesus' birth. The wise men kept following the star to find the baby. They finally found Jesus, Mary, and Joseph in Bethlehem. They were so quiet so they wouldn't make baby Jesus. They knelt beside his bed. He was so tiny. They kissed his little cheek. 
Sleep well, little one, they said, and they left him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Those were very expensive gifts. They were gifts fit for a king. Later, the wise men decided it was time to go home. They were planning to tell King Herod where they found baby Jesus, but God sent an angel to talk to them in a dream. The angel told them that King Herod was dangerous, so they went home a different way instead. Jesus was indeed a new baby king who surprised the wise men and frightened King Herod. Jesus was God's promise born for us, a gift to all people. So in our story, we hear that King Herod didn't like Jesus. He was not happy, and he asked the wise men to come tell him where Jesus was. And part of what we celebrate on Epiphany is the good news that Jesus' love is for all people, even the wise men, that they found him. And then that meant that they could tell the world about Jesus' love now too. But it also is a story about how the angel came to the wise men in the night to tell them not to go back to Herod so that Jesus would be safe. And we give thanks that God protects Jesus and God protects us too from scary people and from mean people. Now, I said this yesterday, but God loves King Herod, too. But God knows that in order to protect Jesus, he has to tell the wise men not to go talk to Herod. And that means that God loves you even when you're mean, even when you're kind of grumpy. But God also wants better for you. God wants to protect you from mean people and wants to help you not be mean to others. So in our story, the wise men brought three different kinds of gifts to Jesus. And I wanted to tell you about those gifts today and tell you what they mean. So the first gift is called gold. And maybe you've heard of gold before. I have in my little box here this globe, and I'm going to shake it so you can see all the gold pieces of gold floating around inside this glass ball. You see all those? That's gold. Isn't it beautiful? It's very pretty. It's very expensive. It costs a lot of money and it's very fancy. And so when the wise men brought Jesus, this little bitty baby, gold, that present was a gift that you gave kings. And so that present was a sign that Jesus is a king for us. And so that means to us that no matter who's in charge in our life, no matter who's the president or who kings are in our world or queens, God is the most important person in our life. Jesus is the most important leader in our life. So gold represents that God is our king. Jesus is our king. Next thing they gave him was frankincense which kind of is a funny word. Can you say frankincense? Frankincense. I did not know what frankincense was growing up, but now I know that it looks like this. See how it's just little pieces? It's just little pellets. And if you sniff it, it smells really good. And frankincense, when you take these little pieces and you get them really hot and you burn them, when you burn it, it turns into smoke and it clouds up and it, it, it's something that we sometimes use in church to make it smell good in church. So that was something that people used in worship a lot. And frankincense then was a present that said that Jesus was not only our king, but also our priest. So that meant that Jesus was going to teach us new things about God and that Jesus was in charge was the, even though I'm the pastor of Faith United, and even though there are other pastors in this world, the most important priest we have is Jesus, because he teaches us more about God than anybody else. The last gift that is given is called myrrh. And myrrh also has a smell and it's different than frankincense. It's got, here, I'll put some in my hand for you. Myrrh has bigger pieces and this is also something that you can burn. But if you look, 
see really closely, you can see that it's kind of, it's a little bit see-through. And that's because myrrh is a kind of thing called rosin, which is comes from trees. And that was something that people who were doctors used to use in the old world. Myrrh helped heal people. And so giving Jesus myrrh showed that Jesus is our healer. And Jesus is also going to be a prophet who is going to tell us of things that can of God's love, which heals us. But this is also myrrh is something that people used to take care of bodies after somebody died. And so Jesus, when he gets myrrh at his birth, it also is a sign to us that someday Jesus will die and he will have myrrh to take care of his body. And so at his birth, these gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh say, Jesus is our king, Jesus is our priest, and Jesus is our healer, and someday to heal us, he'll die, and that death will heal us and set us free. That's the story we hear at Easter. So all of these presents mean something special, and all of these presents are different things that we, tell us different things that we learned about Jesus at Epiphany. And so this week, as we celebrate on the 6th, on Wednesday, Epiphany, I invite you on Wednesday to take some time to pray with your family and think about what ways God is helping lead you and teach you and heal you this week. With that, let us pray. Good and gracious God, we give you thanks for your son, Jesus Christ, who was born and who the wise men visited. Thank you for their gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh that teach us that Jesus is our king, our priest, and our healer. Help us notice how Jesus leads and teaches and heals us today. In your name we pray. Amen. I hope you have a happy epiphany and a good week, and I will see you at the same time, same place next week for more stories about when Jesus was little. God's peace.